Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so we're going to move on with Raphael. He's going to get into the dimensions part that we just uh, alluded to. Um, Raphael is coming from Copenhagen, and I think you're, you have an ecology background, if I understand. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Please. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, uh, this should follow on from disk arrays. Actually, dimensional data and disk arrays are often used together in most of the packages they're used in. Um, and also, I think pyramid scheme is a disk dimensional array, right? Yeah. So they all kind of work together. Um, so first question, um, maybe people in Julia, new to Julia don't know about this, but there are a lot of dimensional array packages in Julia. I think there's like seven if you count the, the edge cases. Um, and so I'll just answer why this one exists, um, <laughs> basically. Um, I think it's justified itself now, but in the early days it hadn't. Um, so the problem is geospatial data. Name dimensions and lookup values are ubiquitous. We have uh, X and Y, latitude and longitude coordinates. We have time dimensions. And we use them to select spatial and temporal areas of our data all the time. Um, but um, NetCDF, CF standards, have a lot of complicated ways to do this. There are a lot of different kinds of lookups. They can be um, uh, ordered, like aligned or unaligned with the dimensions. Um, so, and also multi-array data sets are really common where you have multiple arrays of different dimensionalities sharing some dimensions. And none of the existing packages could do this. Um, this is something that X-Array can do. Um, the name is cut off the bottom of the screen. But um, so some of the motivation was to have something like X-Array in Julia, but also something more abstract that we can use as a back end for a lot of the spatial packages. Um, so I'm going to try and explain what it does. I'm not sure everyone really understands a lot of the concepts when they're using dimensional data, even though it's getting kind of widely used. Um, so first, I'll talk about what a dimension even is um, to get started. So dimensions, it's just a wrapper type. It's a very dumb thing. It's one struct that wraps something else. And this act of wrapping something tells us what dimension we mean this thing is from or related to. And um, that can really be anything. It can be an integer. So we can see the first item on the x dimension. It can be a range. This may be the lookup along a dimension. It can be a selector. Here we're seeing. Uh, things on X not at 70. Um, but really this can wrap anything. So it's kind of extensible to be used um, to relate actions to dim dimensions. Um, we've defined a bunch of standard dimensions, X, Y, Z, and Ti, because we can't really use time or T. Um, and this like, standardizes spatial data, but we also have just generic dimensions where you can name your dimensions anything you want. Um, but they're all subtypes of dimension. Um, the next concept is lookups. These used to be the same thing and they're separate now. A lookup is an array that holds values along a dimension, um, has traits like points and intervals. Um, but most of these are detected automatically from your data. So like when you're using dimensional data, half the time you don't know these exist. They're kind of in the background making things work. But they allow us to dispatch on some of the things I'll show you later on to give correct selecting behavior over intervals and points and fast lookups so we know the order of, look of arrays already, things like that. Um, you can define them manually when you need. And here's a sampled uh, lookup, the most common one. And it's an abstract sampled aligned lookup. Um, so there's, there's quite a, a family of different kinds of lookups. We have lookups that can take X and Y dimensions into account so we can deal with the rotated and skewed lookups. But mostly you're just dealing with sampled in everyday data. Um, yeah. Um, next, I'll show you the basic, basic main use case is building a dim array or using a dim array. Um, and a dim array is an abstract dim array, um, which is just an abstract array. So mostly it behaves just like an array uh, unless you use special indexing. Um, this is the, the simplest way to make an array. We've made an array with a small vector of numbers and a dimension holding a vector of values that relate to those numbers. So you can see that those are detected as being categorical values. And so we have an X dimension of categorical values where A is one, B is two, C is three. But you can expand this arbitrarily largely. So um, we can make N dimensional arrays. Here we have an X and a Y dimension, a categorical and a sample dimension. Um, and actually this prints way nicer in the REPL now. It's all colored, but it doesn't show in the slides, fortunately. 
Um, we can also make un, like arbitrarily named dimensions just by using a name tuple to define the array. And then we have dimensions called A and B. And people in stats and other fields like these more, but I think in spatial data, we mostly use the X and Y. Um, we can also do things like just make run rand or fill or zeros using dimension wrappers and get a dim array back. So you can define uh, as a shorthand to making a quick array that has named dimensions. Um, we also have this thing called dim stack. I think people really don't know what this is. Um, and it's n less often used directly, but um, Rasters um, uses this for NetCDF, for HDF5, for any data sets that have um, multiple arrays sharing dimensions. Um, and it lets us index into those and use them as if it's one array. I'll demonstrate that a little bit. Um, so it's an abstract dim stack. Um, and the point of these always being abstract type is everything works in the abstract type, so it's all extensible. And that's kind of why I think it's been used more is because you can make your own types behave like this very easily. Um, so we can define a dim stack um, using layers with the same dimensions. Here we just define a name tuple of arrays and then pass these x and time dimensions in. So we've got two arrays, layer one and layer two, with the same dimensions here. Um, but we can also use different dimensions. So we can have an object with mi mixed dimensionality that we can still index into um, that has, here we have two dimensions for one of the arrays and one dimension for the other array. Um, and this is actually quite common in NetCDF where you have, you have layers that have X and Y spatial dimensions and then you have another data set that has a time dimension as well. So you, you're kind of using them together. Um, and um, so this is the main thing dimensional data is for, is named indexing. Um, and this is some benchmarks of that, just to show this is a cost-free process. You can use this in inner loops, it's very fast. Um, so you can, name, you can see here I'm using three and four in Julia base array syntax, but I can use Y4, X3 out of order just to demonstrate that it works. It flips them around the right way. Or you can use this uh, keyword syntax, Y equals four. And there's no cost to that, That's, it's free, it's a compiler um, action. And you can see also with dim stack we have the same, it's only three nanoseconds to get a name tuple back from a stack um, using these keywords. Um, the next use um, is to use the lookup values that we have in spatial data instead of just the names of the arrays. We, uh, we want to select data using our lookup values. And we have a bunch of things called selectors. Um, the first is at. This is just the shortest word I could think of that meant this. I want to have a wrapper type so it's different to standard Julia uh, indexing. But we can make an array and we can index into it with at. Here I'm going a x at 80. So I, I want the value on the x-axis at the, uh, where the lookup value is 80. Um, but I can also do it with x at 80 point something with a tolerance. So if you have data that's it's not quite exact, you can use that. There's also near, which just finds the closest match, similar to at, but um, contains, finds the interval that contains a value. So you can set up your axes to be uh, intervals rather than points, and you can find which interval <coughs> contains the value that you want. Um, so it's like near, but more accurate. Um, and this will work across all different kinds of intervals where you have irregular intervals, regular intervals, exactly specified intervals like you get in NetCDF. So yeah, there's a lot of dispatch in the back end to make this just always work the same way. Um, we also have dot dot, which is interval dot sets um, notation. So we can just select our range 9.5 dot dot 15 and we'll get back all the values inside that range. Um, these are, we can also use these multi-dimensionally as well. I'm just showing one to be simple, but you can be m indexing four dimensions at the same time like this. Or less, you don't have to specify the dimensions you're not interested in. Um, last, we have where, which is like a que dimensional query, so we can query values along a dimension. Here I'm si saying um, I want all values of x where they are odd numbers, and you can see the result. We have one, three, five, seven, nine. Um, so you can use that as a, a, as a way of, of, probably you're not gonna use is odd, but some other kind of spatial query 
you can use any function you want in there. And that's a function of the lookup values. Um, there are a bunch more selectors as well, um, but they're kind of similar to the ones we have, like touches and no time to show them here. Um, the next thing uh, dimensional data does is plotting. So it uh, allows any package that extends dimensional data to get free plots.jl plots and Mackey plots that should have the right labels and put the right labels in the right place. So arrays will be permuted and reversed and turned around so that everything's in order and hopefully like X is on the X axis, Y is on the Y axis, things like that. So here we can say, make a scatter plot with plots and we can just plot, plot dot scatter this random array and you can see it's labeled A, B, C, D with the X label. Um, you can do the same with Mackey. We can make a heap map um, just over a, ra a normal random uh, dim array and it's, and it's labeled with categories and values along the bottom. Um, and last, uh, I want to talk about the integrations. Um, dimensional data uses all abstract types everywhere, and that was intentional from the start. Um, it was made to be built into rasters.jl, but I didn't want to put all of this code in a really geospatial package with a lot of dependencies. So you just need to write a dims and rebuild method, and um, other array types will work like a dimensional array. So broadcasting will work all those things will maintain dimensions um, over time. Um, and so far we have, there's probably a few more packages now, but rasters, yaks arrays, climate base, astro images, um, pyramid scheme, and then some modeling um, packages, rviz, jump, and dynamic grids all accept and use um, dimensional arrays and output them. And and say thanks to all the contributors over the last few years. Um, and also we'll, we can just check out the new docs. Lazaro remade the docs and finally I think we have actually good docs. So there's a whole lot more detail than I can talk about today but you can actually find out what it is now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they're quite nice, there's like walkthroughs of easy things and then various things. We have group by and other cool functions like that that I didn't have really time to talk to. Anyway, um, are we, is that time? Yeah, we're right at time. So there's actually a little bit of five minute buffer. So <clears throat> we have time for questions. Um, and then right after that, we're heading into a, a break. There's a little bit more food downstairs if you missed it at lunch. Thanks for the presentation. Um, one question. So you mentioned there are a few packages that try to do similar, um, fun offer the similar functionality. Uh, one that comes to mind is data frames, because um, uh, how different is data frames from the package that you're showing now? What are the main difference, and what are their use cases? Well, data frames is data frames is tabular data, so you have they're all vectors. So every column is a vector. So uh, uh, the, actually, the dim stacks is a little bit like a data frame in that you can have multiple columns, but they are, each column is multidimensional. Mm. So everything is it's aimed to be multidimensional. Okay. Um, so, but you can convert you can convert a dim stack or a dim array directly to a data frame. So you get the, the dimensions as columns, and yeah. then the data as another column. I see, I see. And that will be lazy, so it won't use mem won't actually use all the memory. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, thanks for that um, crazy efforts that you've put in there. Um, how far do you think you are from, like what's missing compared to x Um Yeah. Um, I don't know, what's missing now? Probably like some of it, like dimensional data is not trying to do everything x -ray does because x -rays is like everything but the kitchen sink kind of, x -rays has disk arrays and dask and, and so much stuff. But dimensional data is just, a layer at the top and those things like disk arrays can happen internally you can put any kind of array inside a dim array so m the idea is that a lot of that functioning w w functionality should be contained in the arrays that um, dimensional data arrays wrap and that rasters does that you'll see in the next talk um, I'm not sure what else what are we missing now we, we did we recently Lazaro got me to make group by and a few other things that were just like we need this we don't have it but Group by could be better. Um, I don't know. 
do you uh, guys good, know what's missing? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? Maybe a naive question. Um, how feasible would it be to use this as a surface whereas like the underlying array is actually unstructured so that you could basically have um, data, let's say if you're thinking about data on the globe, uh, in a completely unstructured way, and you still could say like, "Hey, I want to give me give me the data at like this point," and so suddenly things like near or at become like a bit of like weird things, right? Because they're technically like it's not a it's not you can't necessarily represent that as a matrix anymore. Um, and so, is do you think there's like actually like it's feasible to completely hide the idea of unstructured data from the user, and so the user would just use it as if it was like nice like X Y Z but actually it's basically everything is just a vector underneath because you can't represent it into any, any, any structured matrix form. Yeah, if you can make some other abstract array type oh. that works like that, then it will work inside dimensional data. <laughs> but like yeah. it's really built around, like you have a multi-dimensional array. It can be a sparse array, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a multi-dimensional array and the axes have to be the same size as the lookups. So there's no there's no capability for handling anything except an array, basically. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll break for 10 minutes. Um, we'll start back here at uh, 940, again with Raphael on rasters.jl. So see you guys in 10 minutes. <laughs>